Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as we look at the Skybox cards for the 94 and the 96 USA basketball teams. Both the Dream Team 2 set and the 96 team, which I don't think had any names. So, the 92 Dream Team set was kind of a, an interesting situation because at that time the card industry really hadn't evolved very much. And so when we had these cards, it didn't really fit the majesty of the team. Basically, this was an incredible team, and once we got used to having that team, our thought was, all right, we're going to have this team, a team like this, every two years. And it's going to be like clockwork. Mark your calendar. We're going to enjoy being able to watch players of this caliber every single Olympic game or Worlds, which are the, the games in between. And so we were fired up, and what we did for the 92 team was what we were going to do for 94 and 96 on. We were just going to make it better. So we had everything basically planned out. We were ready for, for whatever was going to happen, and by the time the Worlds happened in 94, we were, we were so optimistic we actually called the team Dream Team 2, which was a pretty optimistic term, but that's, that was the name that we went with, and the the card industry had radically evolved so by this time we had the ability to make the cards that we should have made originally and it is interesting to see just how big a jump it is so for the 94 dream team 2 skybox was no longer alone in the market in terms of these cards contracts were also given to FLIR and to upper deck and FLIR actually got a bit of a jump on everybody because in the 93 94 series 2 set they actually added cards of the dream team 2 players but Skybox wasn't completely walled off from that because they put in an exchange card for their tip-off set. And this was a set that was not a very well-designed card. It was kind of boring, but it was a really, really impressive early card prior to the Olympics. So it got you fired up. And the idea of the set is very simple. It's Dream Team players and Dream Team 2 players, basically corresponding. So Larry Bird was the sharpshooter on the 92 team and Reggie Miller was the sharpshooter on the 94 team. So they had all the players matched up for 11 players, and then there were two players that didn't have anybody lined up. They were just Dream Team 2 players. And the reason for that was one, because Dream Team 2 had 13 players, whereas the original Dream Team had 12. But also, Michael Jordan had retired by this time, and when Michael Jordan retired, Upper Deck had, had set up a coup where they had an exclusive contract with him. So once he wasn't one of the general players in the NBA, in which case everybody makes cards of his, only Upper Deck could make cards of him during this, this period when he was away, which we thought originally was supposed to be permanent, found out it wasn't. So for this particular set, because they weren't Upper Deck, they couldn't use Michael Jordan, even though he was a part of the original Dream Team. It's the same way that we, you usually see retired players suddenly disappear, even though they have one more year of cards to be made. So for this particular set, they have all the players from both teams except Michael. And for the 94-95 set, they also included a team card of the Dream Team 2 players that was a team shot of them standing at the National Anthem in their warm-up gear. And on the back, it has the scores of all the games. But that's all the Skybox did for their main sets. The big thing for 94 was that when they did their actual USA Basketball Team set, this set actually rose to the occasion. This is a really good looking card set. It is six cards of each of the 13 players. Now that's the big difference. 13 players as opposed to the original 10. So for, for the original Dream Team cards, the main card set, they only had the first 10 players. Here they had all 13, which was a really, really nice addition to it. And it was the six cards for each team were four NBA, basically four career cards for each player. And then there were two portrait cards. The first portrait card had a flag dra draped behind them, and then the other one had a field of stars behind him. And the flag card was f to talk about why he was on the team, and the stars card was another Magic Johnson talking about each player card. And the cards, act they, they again were full bleed cards, but here they actually had a little bit of design work on them. So there's a ribbon along the bottom with a little hook at the USA Basketball Team logo. And then there's the player name and a couple of stars, all in silver foil. And the cards came with a gold version, gold foil version, where all the silver was replaced with gold. The USA Basketball logo was replaced with gold. The Skybox logo was replaced with the gold. And they added gold foil 1994 right below the Skybox. So the gold foil jumps off of these cards and it makes it look really cool. I like it a lot better than what Upper Deck did in the same year. And for me, this is what makes this set really fun to collect. They also had coach cards 
and they had a team card, and they had two of the original Dream Team players, David Robinson and Magic Johnson, in action shots from the, from the previous games. But the card that I, I think is most overlooked for this set is three cards, and they are the international rules. Now, it's easy for us to forget about the fact that because basketball is, is as American as baseball, and possibly more American, and it, it's so dominant here in the U.S., it's easy to forget that basketball is basically the second biggest sport worldwide behind soccer, and that we're the only country that used the particular rules that we use. The game's the same, it's just that the particular rules where the three-point line is, etc., that's a little bit different for everybody else. So for a European player coming here to the U.S., it's like a, a college player moving on to the NBA. There are just some, some adjustments that they learn. But for somebody who's spent their entire life in the U.S., going over suddenly to play in these rules can be maybe a little bit more jarring if it's just a, a brief window of time. So I like the fact that they put these rules in there. I thought that was a really good addition. They also have autographed versions of the cards, and the main way that you can tell the autographed version, it's not all the cards, it's just a few, but the main way you can tell the autographed cards, the official autographs, is the fact that they use a gold pen. So if you see a gold pen, that means that it's an original from the set. If it's not a gold pen, it's a personal autograph. And they had a wrapper send away so that you could get the 14th player, who is Kevin Johnson. And all, he comes with all of his cards, and they didn't have a place in the the set for his card numbers, so they they just kind of tacked it on at the end. There are two insert sets, and the first one is Dream Play. And this this card set is base. It basically looks at at two particular plays that the player is known for. And on the front, it's a it's a typical skybox card cut out of the player against a matte black background. And if you tilt the card, you'll find that there are little glossy symbols all over that are play elements. And it's a neat effect that it has. The name at the top with the sparkly silver isn't that big of a deal, but, but the texturing on the card, the way that the light plays off of it, I, I, I really like that aspect of these, these cards. Their other insert set is the portraits, and this is a photo that is painting-ized, and it has a big gold foil border around it with some, some raised pieces in there, some paraphernalia that's kind of tossed in, and the name. And it's difficult to see all of that. So these cards, to me, it looks like they're trying to do something delicate using a sledgehammer. I think these cards are a big fail. I really like the dream play. I just don't like the portraits. They also added an exchange card, and this was for their on-the-court set. And the on-the-court set basically shows all the players in action shots during the games. So that was basically what Skybox did for 94. By the time 96 came along, they did do one insert set for their main Skybox set. And these are, these are really nice cards. They're 10 cards, and they, they've cut out shots of the players against a black and white or a gray scale. It's kind of like a globe or a map of the Arctic but kind of a world shot behind. And the cards are, they're, they're not striking. They're actually very subdued, but they're very, very well crafted. And if I were to get a, a poster of any card of any of the Dream Team sets, period, across all of the different companies, I think this is the one I'd go for because it's the one that's the most like an actual work of art. It doesn't stand out, but it, it reads very well in, in a very balanced way. And I, I love these cards but they were inserted in the main Skybox set. And it was, again, a little preview. These guys are all in, in posed action shots. But it's, it's a very nice card for, for kind of looking forward to what was coming. And then for 96, this was when we were going back to the Olympics, or actually the Olympics were coming to us. And so this meant that the big boys were showing up. We had four Dream Team players show back up. We even had a fifth. Sir Chuck showed up a little later on. We had two of the Dream Team 2 players show up, and we had a couple of other guys like Penny Hardaway who joined the team as well. And so, so this was, was a more exciting time because the team was going to be a whole lot better. And because it was for the Olympics, it meant a lot more. So for the main set for the 96 Olympics cards, they went, with a, well, they went back to more of a skybox style, and they have the cutout of, of the player just like with the regular set. But this time, the background is a, a different a more fun background. They took an interesting take on the Olympic rings, a very stylized image, really nice, and they took little snippets of the whole composition and used those as backdrops behind each player. 
The problem is the background is so dynamic and so strong that it, it detracts from the player and neither one stands out. So they kind of run together. So the set is on the verge of being great and yet it fails, I feel. They're beautiful cards. They really are beautiful cards. They just don't look like a card set. There are five cards for each of the players and it is the original 10 players, like with the original Dream Team. And every player has five cards, plus there is a sixth card for each player that's actually a dual card. So it's two players on the same card. So even though every player has six cards, that sixth card, there are only five of them, not 10. So laying them out on pages is, is a little tricky. They also have coach cards, and then they have a couple of inserts. And the insert that really makes this, this whole set really work, which is really fun, is their quads. And the quads are mini cards, quarter size cards of each, each card. And it's a regular size card with each of the four with perforations between them. So you can break them apart and have a little mini set. Or you can just leave them together. And some of the cards are all one player. And other ones are just a, a jumble of four different players. And it's the main sets and it's the inserts as well. So these are really neat cards. And this is, again, this is what I think makes the set. Their other insert set is not really a, an officially named set. It's the bronze, silver, and gold sets. And so it's all about the metal foil. The cards are a cutout image of the player against a color fade background. And they have gold foil of the word USA, of the rings, of the player name, of the team logo, all that stuff. And it comes in either bronze, silver, or gold, obviously, with the bronze having a yellow to green backdrop the silver having a blue to dark blue backdrop, and then the gold having a red to dark red backdrop. And every single one of these cards has a sparkle version to it. And obviously the bronze is the easiest, the gold is the hardest. They also had a send away for getting the last two players that joined the team, Mitch Richmond and Sir Chuck, and they have all of their cards. So that means that these are the most likely sparkles for you to end up with if you do try to collect the set. And then Skybox did one other thing. They, they, did, they worked out a deal with Texaco. And so through Texaco gas stations, they had a card set of all 12 players and Lenny Wilkins and a team photo. And so these cards are each of the players in a posed action shot against a silver background with a star with a basketball in it. Really nice cards. They're, they're again, kind of subdued. That was kind of the, the mood for, for some of these 96 cards but they look really good and they don't feel like the other sets because of the fact that it's, it's associated with the gas station, but it's a good set to have. And I think that it's a whole lot better than the send away for the, uh, either of the send aways for the dream team two cards. So that was basically what, what Skybox did for, for dream team two and for the 96 team. And it's interesting to look at the 92, 94 and 96 cards because it's, it's amazing how much growth happened in the 90s in such a quick period of time to see just how far they, they swung. But I don't know of anything else that Skybox did. By the next Olympics, all three of the main companies that had done it this year were out of it, basically. It was just Topps. It was the only year that Topps had done it in 2000. So this was the grand hurrah for, for FLIR, for Upper Deck, and for Skybox. And in this run, I'm not, I'm not familiar with anything else that Skybox did, so I'm very curious to find out if there was anything else by Skybox. Other than that, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, feel free to, uh, to leave comments below on, on what you think about this stuff. Again, if I happen to miss something, I'm, I'm curi always curious to know what I haven't come in, in contact with, but I'm pretty sure that I've got everything for these sets. So if you haven't subscribed, by all means, do subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified for new videos. Check out other videos that I've done on, on the Olympics and upcoming as well. And I hope that, I hope that this was a, a video that you enjoyed and hope that you'll hit the like button. And thank you very much for watching.